Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Week 11 in the National Football League. We kick things off on Thursday the 19th with the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, so this is a battle for first place in the NFC West. The Cardinals, of course, are coming off the Hale Murray against Buffalo, and the Seahawks have not looked good in about four weeks. So this matchup is really going to determine... Um, who takes the the stranglehold in the NFC West because I don't think the Rams are a legitimate threat. And and it's really up to these two teams. And the Seahawks have a lot of issues. And the Cardinals just look like a team that, uh, that has it all together. So they're going to be my pick on Thursday night. Give me Arizona. Then on Sunday, we have the 9-0 Steelers against the 1-8 Jaguars. The Jags have lost eight straight. And... That will be nine straight. Sure, this is a trap game for Pittsburgh, but there's no way the Steelers lose this game. Give me Pittsburgh. The Eagles at 3-5-1 versus the 6-3 and three Browns. Philadelphia has won five straight games versus Cleveland, but the Eagles are coming off an embarrassing loss to the New York Giants, in which they still retain first place in the NFC East, but a loss this week in the Giants' win would flip that. So it's going to be all up to Cleveland... For Giants fans in their hopes of getting into the playoffs. And I don't see that the Eagles have a shot to win this game. Give me Baker and and and, uh, and Juice. Uh, and I like the Browns. Nick Chubb's back. He's healthy. He looks good. I'm going with Cleveland. Then the 6-3 Titans versus the 6-3 Ravens. So both of these teams have been stumbling uh, recently. The Ravens just haven't looked like the Ravens. Of, of last year. And the Titans, after starting off so hot, have just cooled off completely. They started off 5-0 and and now are 1-3 and in their last four games. So, they have a long way to go. It's going to take them a while, I think, for both of these teams to really figure out their identity again. And and the, the season is narrowing towards its close. So, these teams are really going to have to understand that this is crunch time and this is a big game this will go a long way in seeding the AFC playoffs and I, I like Tennessee to me they're the more well-rounded team I just think that Lamar Jackson needs to show more as a passer for me to take the Ravens seriously so give me Tennessee then the four and five Lions will face the three and seven Panthers Teddy Bridgewater is unlikely to play and the Panthers have lost five straight Give me Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. Then the 4-5 and five Patriots will take on the 2-7 and seven Texans. This game last year would have been an instant classic. But this year, it's, it's you know, just a game. Uh, I'm going to say give me Cam and the Patriots because on defense they look good uh, against Baltimore. And on offense, they're getting creative. Josh McDaniels is finding ways to get the ball in the hands of his playmakers in unconventional ways. And that's really the way you have to win football games when you're struggling. And for Houston, they just have a litany of problems that go back to even before they drafted Deshaun Watson. And they're still ever present in their current state. I can't pick against the Patriots in this game. Give me Belichick, give me Cam, give me New England. Then the 3-6 and six Falcons will take on the 7-2 and two New Orleans Saints. Atlanta has won three of their last four under their new uh, interim head coach. But they get Jameis Winston and slant boy Michael Thomas in the Saints. Drew Brees will miss this game in probably extended periods of time with the broken ribs and collapsed lung. So it's going to be the Jameis show. And I want to pick Atlanta, but I'm just too too smart to pick against a better, a clearly better team. So that's why I just have to go with New Orleans in this game. Then the Cincinnati Bengals at 2-6 and 1 will take on the 2 and 7 Washington football team. This is a matchup of the top 2 overall draft picks from this year's draft, Joe Burrow and Chase Young. Uh, this is going to be the Chase Young show. That offensive line in Cincinnati cannot block a fifth grader. It's it's kind of embarrassing, honestly. 
And I, I said it's going to be the Chase Young show, but he really hasn't done a damn thing since Washington picked him back in April. So maybe he needs a, a great showing against the number one overall pick to um, to, uh, to 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 show anything. Because people are going to vote him vote him to be the rookie of the year when he's done nothing. Same thing with Joe Burrow. Look at Justin Herbert and look at Joe Burrow and tell me those two are on the same plane in terms of rookie of the year. You would be so wrong and I'd laugh in your face. Neither of these two guys, the number one or the number two overall pick, should be the rookie of the year. Neither of them have played like it. But I have to pick uh, Cincinnati in this game. They've got a lot of weapons. I'll give them credit for that. They've given Burrow a lot to work with in terms of uh, players that he can get the ball in the hands of. It's just a matter of if the line can block and if that defense can stop Alex Smith. Because Alex Smith now has thrown for 300 yards in his last two games. So, uh, I don't know. This is an interesting game, but I'm going to pick Cincinnati. Then the 0-9 Jets face the 2-7 Chargers. Oh boy, Joe Flacco is 2-12 in his last 14 starts. So this is an interesting one. The Jets can build up a lead like they did against New England a couple Mondays ago. But then the Chargers would likely reclaim the lead and then blow it. And I mean this game is just going to be a shit show all the way around. Uh, I'm going to pick the Chargers though because I like Justin Herbert. I like that team better. So I'm gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick LA. Then the Miami Dolphins at six and three will face the Broncos at three and six. Denver has lost three of their last four. I do believe they'll be without um, Drew Locke uh, for this game. And Tua Tagovailoa in his first three starts has looked impressive. I will give him a lot of credit. Maybe he needs to have his voice heard in the Rookie of the Year conversation. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tua. I'm a big fan of the Dolphins. I've loved what they have done with their organization over the past three, four years. Uh, and for for Dolphins fans, it's been a dreary few years, but it's it's led to this. It's led to them getting their guy, and now they have a chance to do some special things in the playoffs. So it'll be it'll be Tua Tagovailoa for me and the Miami Dolphins. Then the Dallas Cowboys at two and seven will take on the four and five Vikings. Vikings have won three straight after starting one and five. And Kirk Cousins got his first win ever on Monday Night Football. Hell is frozen over. 2020 has played its final trump card. No pun intended to the current political climate in the United States. But, I I, I don't know. The Vikings have to win this game. They have to. If they want any chance of keeping pace with Chicago or, or, or with Green Bay... Hell, even even Detroit can make a push now uh, to be the second second place team in the NFC North and potentially squeak into the playoffs with an eight and eight or a nine and seven. So it's it's not out of the realm of possibility for any of those teams to make the playoffs. And the Vikings need a win like this. And when you have a a clearly inferior opponent like Dallas, you need to put them down handedly. Dalvin Cook should should take this game over immediately. From the word go, they have to turn around and hand the ball to Dalvin Cook. Um, I didn't catch the game against the Bears, unfortunately. I fell asleep before the game started because, you know, I'm getting overworked and underpaid. So I'm just taking whatever little dubs I can. And that happened to be one of them, unfortunately. So I'm not sure what the recent reference point of reference is for uh, Minnesota. But I know they won. And I know it was, it was, it was convincing. Uh, so I, I will I will take Minnesota against Dallas. Then the seven and two Packers and the six and three Colts. Uh, the Colts have allowed the fewest yards per game this season, two hundred and ninety point four total on average, and the Packers are struggling to get uh, any sort of consistent offensive production going. And it's not an Aaron Rodgers problem. It's not his fault. Like you can only throw a ball so beautifully if your receiver can't haul it in. And I, I, I like to make this argument a lot for Aaron Rodgers. But it's it's the truth. I mean, he needs more help. And they're 7-2, and, and all he has is Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones. 
That's incredible to me. And that the defense in Green Bay has not played its best football. They don't look like the unit they were a year ago. And and that scares me. So I'm going to pick Indianapolis in this game just because I think that the smarter head the smarter part of me says go with Indianapolis and and that's what I will do. Then on Sunday night football, the 8 and 1 Chiefs go to the Death Star and play the 6 and 3 Raiders. Kansas City has won 14 of their last 15 with their only loss coming week 5 of this year against the Las Vegas. I think the Raiders got their number. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Raiders at home under under the the lights of the Death Star with the big Al Davis Memorial torch in the background can can get a big win. Knock off the Chiefs and and maybe start to bottleneck this race for the number 1 uh team in the AFC West. Uh, the, the, the Raiders need to sweep the Chiefs to have any chance. And then they have to pray the Chiefs can drop one somewhere else. Because right now, it, it's this destiny is in the Raiders' hands. And all they have to do is beat Kansas City. And, and they're in the driver's seat to their own future, pretty much. If they win out, I mean, sure, Kansas City could win out. And then we're in the same boat anyway. But it's it's up to the Raiders. They have to, they have to get a big win here if they want the people to take them seriously. So I'm gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick Las Vegas. I'm gonna pick the underdog in this matchup on Sunday Night Football. Then on Monday night we have the six and three Rams and the seven and three Buccaneers. The Rams have allowed 18.7 points per game. That's the second fewest in the NFL versus one of the highest scoring offenses in the game, unless they're playing the New Orleans Saints uh, in Tampa Bay and Tom Brady. So this game is gonna be very very interesting. Uh, Rams defense. Has looked very good. Shut down Russell Wilson. Uh, handedly shut down Russell Wilson in that game. Was not close. And and, and they have a, t- a tall order ahead of them against Tom Brady and all these weapons and Evans and Godwin and A.B. and Gronk and Howard and, and Bray and Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette and uh, LaShawn McCoy. And there's just so... Is LaShawn McCoy there? I don't know. Probably. Who knows at this point. It, they have so much talent. To be 7-3, and three, I think it's a disappointment if you're a Buccaneers fan. You should be undefeated right now with all that damn talent. But I'm going to pick the Rams in this game. I think that defense is going to win this game. And, and and the defense in L.A. just has, has shown me a lot over the past few weeks. So I'm going to give the nod to the Rams on Monday night. Then the teams on their bye are going to be the 5-5 five five Bears, the 4-6 fi- uh, 49ers, excuse me, the 3-7 New York Giants, and the 7-3 Buffalo Bills. Alrighty, that was week 11. Hope that you all enjoy the games. Uh, stay safe. Um, be smart, wear a mask, all that fun stuff. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy some football. I know I will, and I will catch you guys next week for week 12 game picks.